Hello, everybody, and welcome to the NJ Racing Podcast. My name is Chris Graham, and it is my pleasure to have with us Chris Gerback for an episode of 20 Questions. This show is an irreverent look at your driver's personalities off the track, with 20 or so questions asked in a rapid-fire style. We do minimal editing of the conversation, only stopping the raw feed for outside interruptions. We hope you enjoy this episode and look for new episodes coming right here to Facebook and soon to all of your favorite podcasting apps. Without further ado, here's this episode of 20 Questions with Chris Gerback. Thank you for joining us today, Chris. Can you please tell us your full name? My name is Christopher Scott Garback. And what is your hometown? Uh, South Brunswick, New Jersey. Okay. Tell me about 2018 on the track. Where did you run? What division? I know you had a, some issues early season. Uh, we'll get the, the ugly part out of the way early. <laughs> uh, I started the season at New Egypt, but I just wasn't happy with the way the, uh, things went opening night. So I decided to uh, go up to Orange County and run 358 up there because I had more help and more sponsors to run up there so we tried that and actually enjoyed running up there all year and we finished the year off yesterday up there trying to qualify for eastern states with a small block and a big block yes i saw that you had a a nice weekend up there for eastern states and uh so hopefully and we'll get to your 2019 plans here shortly but first now it's time to to run you through the ringer a little bit here at a (laughs) roulette table red or black black besides a race car driver what do you want to be when you grow up uh astronaut oh that's the first of that answer we've had what would your vanity plate say and if you have one don't tell us what it is because people will find you (laughs) big pimpin (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome what is the first preset on your car stereo uh, 92.3. 92.3? Yeah. Which station is that? It used to be a rock station. I don't know what it is now. Okay. How do you like your bacon cooked? Very crispy. Tupac or Biggie? <laughs> That's a rough one. Biggie. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody else gets that question right. <laughs> what is the best meal you ever ate? The best meal I ever ate has got to be steak. Okay. Any particular preference for who makes it, how they make it? My wife actually makes a good steak. Okay. What is the best year in racing history? Can be yours, can be global, can be anything you want. Well, I would have to say 1970. Okay. So that would be NASCAR era, Pete Hamilton and the big wing cars. The yeah, I think that's that's pretty uh, pretty good point for all auto racing just because of the cars they were running. Ah, oh, that's awesome. That is a great answer. What is the first concert you attended? Def Leppard. Well, where'd you see them? Um, I saw them at the Meadowlands. Okay. With well, Tesla. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Actually, that was a good one. I say I heard somebody's going to see Tesla. Like they went last night or something to see him up in Jim Thorpe. That's that's yeah. They're still good. They're a good band. Okay, uh, where did you go on your first date ever? Oh wow! Uh, back seat of a car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being straight. Uh, that's awesome. I know the answer to this question, but I'm interested to hear how you're going to give it. When you're leaving a liquor store, what is in your brown paper bag? Uh, fireball. (laughs) Are cats pets or Chinese food? I think they're both. They could be used for both. (laughs) (laughs) Depends how bad they are. (laughs) Uh, What song best describes your love life? Uh, No. That's a a hard one. Shoot. Um... The married life, so I don't know. You lost that loving feeling, I guess. Oh, okay. That's nah, awesome. I'm just that's kidding. A good but... one. Oh, that's awesome. The Sandlot or the original Bad News Bears? I would say the Bad News Bears. I say the Walter Matthau actual yeah. beer swilling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the real stuff. All right. It's 2 a.m. after a long night at the track. What are you eating and where? Oh, we're definitely having a burger somewhere at a diner. 
Okay. Bacon cheeseburger. Nice. Were the Beatles musical geniuses or the first shit boy band? Like the first shit boy band. <laughs> Would you accept a free one-way ticket to another planet? No. <laughs> boardwalk fries or boardwalk pizza? Boardwalk fries. Okay. What is the best racing movie of all time? Oh, man. So I think Six Pack is. Okay. That's yeah. the first time we've heard that one. I like that answer. That's probably from older people, though. I think uh, the older people say that. Uh, well, it's, I if you're a connoisseur of racing films, it's a must watch. Yeah, or people will say Days of Thunder, but that was probably the fakest. <laughs> well, that leads me to my follow up. What is the worst <laughs> racing movie of all time? That, that's not the worst. I would have to say uh, Talladega Nights was the stupidest I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. People like it, but I just think it's stupid. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. <laughs> okay, next to last question. If you were sentenced to death by overconsumption, which would you choose? Death by cheeseburger or death by blowjob? <laughs> That's keeping it light. <laughs> <laughs> I would say death by blowjob then. Okay. And uh, we'll, now we'll give you the last question here. A chance to thank all your <laughs> supporters and crew and sponsors and everybody. Tell us a little bit about 2019 for you as well. Well, 2019, it looks like we're going to have, uh, we're going to be running Middletown with the 358 small block. And it looks like we're going to probably run a bunch of bigger races with a big block car. Okay. And uh, the past two years, I've had a gentleman by the name of Jim Weber helping me out. And he's from out in Ohio. And he just actually drove 560 miles to come out here and spend a weekend with us up at Middletown. Wow. Um, Bobby Lyman Jr., I'm sure you know him down in new egypt he does our shocks for us and he's he's really good with helping us out with a lot of stuff you know talk about setups and stuff um i actually run hig fab chassis so jerry higby is a a great asset to have as a friend to talk to and bounce things off of and i mean he he helps out whenever he can i mean the guy even let me use his pickup truck to go and get my body from the vinyl guy up there when I went up to New York because I had my trailer with me. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, Richard Burroughs, he's, he's, he's got a single truck that he drives. I mean, he helps with the track. He helps with tires and fuel. He's been a good friend for a long time. Uh, my friend Tommy Lane, Scott Moore. Um, we also have Pat Norsha of the famous New Jersey Norsha family, Norsha truck bodies that has been helping me out also. And uh, actually just for this race this week, Escape RV jumped on board to help us out, Joey Barbagallo. So we had a we had a pretty good amount of people and my cousin Doug, this guy, I mean, he helps whenever I need him to come up. He lives an hour away and he does all my stuff with my tires now because hoosiers are a lot of you got to do so much to them things to get them to work <laughs> and he just he doesn't let up i mean he he goes at it all right that's so we, awesome yeah we i mean we've this past two years is probably the best two years i ever had equipment and engine wise mark bittner does my engines and he's also a really good friend i mean he he goes the extra mile to do the stuff he really he's meticulous and I've never had such good engines before. And we're fast. We're, I mean, we're, I was so fast up there this year. I just couldn't finish a race without getting wrecked. But it's just different when you're running such a big racetrack up there. Right. But the atmosphere is better. They're improving things up there. They're making it so good for the fans up there. I mean, they, they should really watch what they're doing up there to bring it down here because they, they just they treat the drivers with so much respect. They make it fun to go there. I, I think that's something that over the, the course of this season, we're going to start seeing a lot more of is taking the input from the drivers and, and going that direction. I think 
if you want to have a lot of fans, you got to have the big car counts. And if you're going to have the big car counts, you got to keep the drivers and teams happy. Yeah, uh, they got to bring the purse up. He he brought the purse up. You get towed in on a wrecker, they'll wait until you change that tire to let you down, not just drop you in the middle of the pits like at New Egypt. Right. I mean, I, I hate to badmouth, but part of the reason I left there is because, you know, if you're a little guy, you're basically not – Right. Taken care of as well as the big guys up here. It doesn't really amount as much in that way. You know, of course they have their favorites, but as a whole, I felt like I was treated with more respect and more at home two hours away. <laughs> I mean, it kind of sucks. That's the way it is, but it's just the way it is. Right. And well, it was either quit or go somewhere else. So that's what I did. I went somewhere else. Well, I was going to say, that's when when your choices are pack it up and, and not do what you love or find yeah. a new place to do what you love, you find a place to do what you love. Exactly. So. It's not an option. And you, like, even going to Bridgeport, I tell you, that three-eighths I got down there is the – I enjoyed that more than anything too. I, I think that track's going to see a lot more use this year. Um, and and some of the big shows they're putting on down there are going to be pretty spectacular this year. They it's a shame they lost so many to rain. Um, I know, and they do like Danny Serrano is such a good guy too because, you know, you go down there, you're pitted all the way in a certain spot. He he actually took me on a golf cart with my fuel jugs. He didn't have to do that, but they're always so oh, thank you for coming. And I mean, and the layout of the track is just. It's more competitive on that three eighths than a lot of the bigger tracks, I think. Right. To race with people, and you you get more clean racing on it. It's just it's more fun. Absolutely. Well, uh, it's uh, at this point, I think we'll wrap things up here. Uh, it's, we'll we'll wrap this edition of Twenty Questions. Uh, we do want to thank our guest Chris Gerbach for t- spending a few minutes with us here today, and thank all of you for joining us as well on the NJ Racing Podcast. This has been a National Racing Network production, and we hope you'll join us for our next edition of the NJ Racing Podcast. Have a great day, everybody. Chris, thank you. We appreciate it.